What's up beautiful people? I'm Erin and this is Erin On Demand and today's video is all about things that I would do if I were starting a YouTube channel today in 2022. Now, if you are new here, I started my channel in 2018 at the very end of 2018 and 2019 was my first full year of YouTube. In that year, I had a goal to hit 50,000 subscribers and ended up hitting almost 100,000 subscribers. But the way that YouTube looks now, even though it's only a few years later, there are still a lot of changes that I would probably make if I were starting a YouTube channel today. So I'm trying to get y'all a little head start because it is not too late to start a YouTube channel, but it is too late to use old practices from YouTube. All right, so the first thing that I would do is make sure that my video quality is really high. There were some videos when I first started where I didn't have the best lighting, um, and I think that that was acceptable at one point, but now, people really expect high quality video and high quality audio. There's really no excuse in 2022 to have any fuzzy pixelated video, any you know muffled audio. You want everything to be crystal clear. However, I do want you to know that smartphone videos do work. So when I say high quality, that does not mean that you shouldn't use your smartphone. But what I do think is that you should use your smartphone with some enhancements. So you definitely want to be using some good lighting, whether you're sitting right in front of a natural light and you have a ring light in addition to that, or some, you know, not too fancy box lighting, whatever it is to enhance the brightness of your videos. Another thing that I will recommend if you are shooting with your smartphone is to use a microphone because if you are vlogging or walking and talking, you don't want the audio to be muffled. And then the third thing I would recommend is getting some sort of stabilizer for your phone. So if you are vlogging with your phone, the video isn't extremely rocky. So I do have a full video on iPhone gear that we use because we do shoot with our iPhones sometimes for air on demand and I don't even think you guys can tell. The second thing that I would do is not hyper niche. Now when I was starting on YouTube that was like the go-to advice that everyone was sharing was to niche, niche, niche. Niche and then niche some more in that niche. And now, although niching is still a, an important strategy, I think that it needs to be done differently. So um, I would recommend creating a target audience persona and using that as your base for your content. And I'm gonna explain the difference. So with niching, you're primarily creating content on one specific topic. So if you consider yourself a YouTube growth expert, you are probably creating a whole bunch of content about YouTube growth. Um, the thing that can get tricky about doing this is that now YouTube sees you as the YouTube girl. So if you if you create any type of content outside of that scope, then your audience is probably not going to engage because YouTube may not push that to your audience. On top of the fact that your audience is just used to you creating one type of content, so they may not trust your other types of content. So a lot of creators can begin resenting their niche because they create so much content and they feel trapped inside of that. The other option of having a target audience persona, it's allowing you to target the entire person. So although you may be a YouTube growth expert, you also love cooking and you love fashion and you love reading. And these are also things that you are targeting in your audience. So maybe your target audience persona is a 25 year old who's been working in corporate for three years, is starting to create on social media. She wants to have a YouTube channel but she also loves all these other things. So it's not to say that you are extremely broad in your content, but you are really trying to attract multiple parts of one person. And the best way to do that is honestly to look at yourself. So um, targeting a persona versus an actual topic is the key with YouTube right now and honestly with any content strategy. Comment down below if you'd like me to do a full video on creating a good target audience persona and breaking down a little bit more the difference between target audience personas and niches. Tip number three is to combine education with entertainment. Okay, so I think YouTube 
sit down videos like this obviously still work. But I don't think that that's all you should be offering your audience. I noticed a huge shift in my channel once I began vlogging and once I began really showing more versus talking more, okay? So you do wanna incorporate some visuals, some different interesting things, things that are gonna be entertaining for your audience as well because again, there are always new people entering the space. There are always new people coming into your niche and so you want your audience to love you for you and not only for the information that they think you can provide. So that is where the entertainment component comes in. Plus, I've done a few polls on my channel in the community tab and people say that they spend most of their time watching YouTube for entertainment and not education. So the channels that they constantly are going back to to watch is to be entertained and not always educated. And I think that this takes the pressure off of you as the creator as well because you aren't constantly coming up with ideas of more information to share with your audience. Instead, you're just sharing who you are. And that is what keeps people coming back to your channel. So I would say instead of going in a rabbit hole of all of the same type of content, go more in a rabbit hole of how can I entertain my audience while also educating them at the same time so I don't get stuck in one space. Tip number four is that one upload a week just isn't enough anymore. And I know I was the queen of saying, you know, post what you can, post when you can, as long as it's consistent. But if you really wanna grow on YouTube, I think that now more than ever, more is more. Um, and I started my channel with uploading once a week and I was noticing that I wouldn't hit my 50K mark if I kept only uploading once a week. So then I started uploading twice a week about halfway through my full year of YouTubing and I hit almost double my goal by the end of the year. So it goes to show how much cranking out more content really does have a huge impact on your you know, overall reach. So I would recommend posting as much as you can consistently. So what I mean by that is, if you can squeeze two to three videos out a week, squeeze two to three videos out a week. If you can squeeze one video out a week, squeeze one video out a week instead of one every other week. Like do what you can as consistently as you can without overwhelming yourself. But I will say that if you are trying to grow at a steady, you know, rate, uploading more frequently without compromising the quality because that is the key the quality still has to be there um, is the key to growing on youtube now and probably forevermore but i would say uh, at minimum uploading once a week if you can squeeze two to three a week that's even better the fifth thing that i would do is get to the point quickly in your video. And this is not just me saying don't have an intro video. I know a lot of channels have intro videos with music and, you know, B-roll of them doing their thing. And that's fine as long as they are short and sweet. But I'm also, when I say intro, I'm also talking about not taking too long to get into the topic that your video is about. So a lot of channels, and I was guilty of this, I had a long intro was like, what's up beautiful people, I'm Erin and this is Erin on Demand, all about blah, 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 and this channel is about blah, 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 and I stopped doing that because it's just not necessary. For the most part, if someone is clicking on your video, they are looking for information about a specific topic or they're interested in whatever it is that your thumbnail and your title say. So you don't need to over explain yourself in the beginning of the video. You especially don't need to tell people to like, comment, subscribe at the beginning of your video because they don't know you more than likely. So if they like you, they will subscribe. Um, these are things like telling your, telling about yourself, telling about your channel, telling people to like and comment and subscribe. Those are things that you can do throughout the video or even at the end of the video if you'd like. But you don't have to cram all of these things at the front of your video before you give people the content. The sixth thing that I would do if I were starting YouTube right now is I would invest in some apps such as TubeBuddy or VidIQ. These are YouTube optimization apps that are really gonna help 
kickstart your YouTube growth. Um, I started using these about eight-ish months into having my channel and I wished that I was using them before and I still use them now. I use both so I know I'm probably going to get questions about which one I like better. I use both of them. You can have both plugins installed and what they do is show you different tags that are ranked high for the video topic. You can also put your video topic in and it'll tell you like on a scale of zero to 100, whether or not they think it's a good idea for you to upload this video based on the search volume plus how much competition that there is currently. So it's a good tool. I would say use it, but you don't have to let it be your end all be all. Um, but it is a great thing to kind of cross check. They have different checklists on there to make sure that you've optimized your video well, like adding your um, end screens, adding cards, and it kind of scores your video each time based on how well it thinks you've optimized it. So they're great tools um, and they both work really well. All all right, the seventh thing that I would do is to use repetition. And this is actually something that I did. So repetition is key. And the more that I was like repeating myself, the more I felt like I was building a stronger connection with my audience. So here's what I mean. Um, every video, I pretty much start off saying, what's up, beautiful people? What's up, beautiful people? What's up, beautiful people? What's up, beautiful people? And even though it's something very small, starting every video with the exact same line or maybe with a similar type of vibe or montage or shot that you always take every time or whatever, like starting with some type of familiarity for your audience definitely helps with brand recognition and it helps build connection. Another thing that I did very frequently was the top three method. In every vlog, I was writing my top three down. Everyone saw it every time I vlogged. And that's when it began to stick with the audience. And you want things that have that stick value to them because that is the stuff that you can kind of expand into a business at some point, like how we did the top three notebooks, or you can expand it into its own brand. So you just want to make sure that whether it's a saying or whether it's a certain look you go for every video, having things that, you know, are re repetitive do actually help your audience get to know you better. You don't always have to be reinventing the wheel for every single video. Tip number eight of what I would recommend if I were starting a YouTube channel right now is to learn how to edit. Gone are the days where non-edited videos just pop off because they're not as engaging. And I know editing is a learning curve, but editing is really where a video can go from good to great. And that doesn't mean that you have to know all of the tricks of the trade, but it does mean adding some text on screen, maybe adding a little B-roll, cutting out any dead or silent moments in your, in your video or your audio. The only times that non-edited videos really work is if it's a short demonstration or a walkthrough video where you're screen sharing and showing us exactly how to do something or Things that happen in real time, like a real time workout or a real time cooking demonstration. But other than that, for the most part, content that is consumed, like regular content like this or vlogs, definitely need to be edited. And I would recommend just constantly practicing your edit skills because the faster you can master editing, the faster it is that you can really begin to engage your audience in a deeper way. So those are the eight things that I would do if I were starting a YouTube channel in 2022. I get a lot of questions on is it too late is it too late to start a youtube channel in 2022 the market or you know the platform is so saturated my niche is just so saturated it is not too late i'm telling you if you guys follow these tips you will be in good hands. The key is to making sure that you make it your own, not trying to copy what you see other people doing. I always say put the you in YouTube because that is gonna be what sets your channel apart from so many others. 
So on your own, I actually want you to ask yourself, am I ready for this commitment? If you are looking to use YouTube to grow and potentially use it for business purposes, to grow your brand in a financial way, then I would definitely recommend following these tips and just asking yourself if you are ready for the time commitment. In the comments below, make sure you let me know if you want that video about niching and targeting your audience, but also let me know what are the biggest things that you are struggling with when it comes to starting your channel? Is it fear? Is it, you know, the learning curve? I want to know down below so I can be as much support as possible. All right, you guys, good luck and I will see you on the next one. Peace.